So the big star at the Tata stall at the Geneva Motor Show is this up here on the platform, the H2X. It's a concept for a new micro SUV, a new segment that Tata Motors is getting into. So really this is a white space in a way, isn't it Pratap? And uh, just tell us a bit about this from a concept point of view and even the design of course, which uh, I think has a lot of Harrier cues as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, as you said, uh, you know, it's a sub, uh, sub compact SUV actually, you know, below the Nexon. And uh, I think it's a white space, but it's a very rapidly growing white space. There's an uh, opportunity for some excitement in that segment. Uh, it also is my or our philosophy of a SUV at every price and, price and every size. Uh, but uh, uh, let's talk a bit about the design because uh, clearly, you know, it's, 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 it's very SUV. It's very upright, more squarish, not as organic or as flowing as let's say the, the, the Nexon is. So can you just, let, let's start with the front. Uh, a mini Harrier over here, you've taken the same design language, you've got the DRLs on top like you have in the Harrier. Yeah. So it was, obviously that was intentional. Kind of, you know, the split lamp treatment. That's right. Uh, this is very much the face of our SUVs. H5X brought that into the, like, the like, world really. Right. Uh, H5X brought that to, to uh, you know, the world and we are going to carry carry on that, that split front lamp. I think it's very dramatic. Or must to have, uh, you know, sort of small, sharp eyes, gives it a sense of purpose but not aggression. I told you, we don't do aggression. Right. So so that's sort of the face. Everything's more 3D, more sculpted. Um, and, you know, again, this also shows, by the way, what the, the alpha architecture can give you. You know, this sort of upright that's right. uh, pillars. You know, it's, it's very yeah. flexible. Uh, looking at the uh, the packaging of the, of the wheel arches, uh, again, uh, this can go up to about 17 inch, 17, 18 inch wheels. Yeah, the, the platform is completely protected to go up to 18. Up to 18 inches. Yeah, it, it can. Of course, the, the, it depends on the, the, the tire, therefore, profile. that's left, the tire profile. Um, of course, in India, I would recommend, of course, a 17 uh, on a car like this. Right. Uh, bonnet area seems a bit small, so obviously, any limitations in terms of engines? Because uh, could this take a four cylinder engine, for example? Perhaps not. Because because the placement is east-west, actually the engine displacement or the number of cylinders don't affect the length. Right. Yeah, they affect more the width. No, but there's the additional plumbing and, uh, you know, for the heat dissipation, bigger yeah, radiators yeah, with a bigger yeah, engine. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, uh, the, again, platform is protected, architecture is protected. If we needed to bring that in, we could. Um, the, of course, you know, the, the little short bonnet, as you mentioned, gives it this really stubby right. sort of feel. I right. want it very much to stay uh, below 3.9 meters. That was really a target to the design team. That we stay below 3.9, but still meet the full, you know, crash requirements. Right. So obviously, working with very short overhangs, which yeah. would mean uh, yeah. packaging of certain ancillaries and mechanicals would it was that would have to be kind of really optimized. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The short overhang therefore gives us more roominess at the back. Right. Because if you look at the the, the passenger yeah. cell. Yeah. Let, let Let's have a look at the back. You know, the, the front seats are all the way to the back now in this position. Right. But you still have, you still have enough knee room, uh, you know, leg clearance, all of that, head, ingress, egress. So we don't want to compromise any of the Tata Motors DNA. And space is one of them. And space is one of them. Ingress, egress is the other, you know, to be able to get in and out of the car. Right. Headroom is the other. Um, and I think it, it comes together in a, you know, this is not a show car uh, treatment, by the way, of the, of the actual passenger cell. This is the space you will get in this car. Right. So it's about 244 mm, 2440 mm wheelbase. That's correct. So that's quite small. So yeah. obviously you have to work a lot within that. Yeah. And the other thing I've noticed is that, you know, when you go vertical, you can get more space that way. So yes. having height makes it easier to Absolutely. liberate more room. Absolutely. Uh, you know, sitting is anywhere between standing and lying down. Between those two extremes is sitting. Right. So in a sports car, you're basically lying down. In an SUV, you're closest to sitting up. Right. And as you said, because you sit higher, it gives you more, more distance, couple distance. Right. Uh, just looking at the front, uh, uh, obviously, you're not going to give that steering wheel. It belongs, I think, more in, a, in an aircraft. But, uh, 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 but I just want to talk on the, let's say, the instrumentation yeah. and you've given an all digital display. Do yes. you think that's the way it's going to be going in the future because uh, that seems to be the trend? See, Hormuz, the people or the customers who will buy this car are actually digital natives. Right. Uh, you know, they, they have, uh, they are completely used to a touchscreen. Right. In fact, many of them would, would have never seen even a push button phone 
uh, you know, in their lives. So, so this is for that generation. They're totally comfortable doing it. We also have voice command, right. which we, you wouldn't have had earlier. Uh, you know, so if you want to change the aircon temperature or change the radio station, you do it by voice. Right. And therefore, you can get rid of some of the buttons. Right. Okay, understood. So you're giving a, a hint that it's going to be a very haptic, not haptic, but a very touch interface with this uh, no, product when it comes. audio. And audio, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. You know, yeah. voice is one of the right. biggest input so, signals. So, yeah, right. so traditional hard buttons, not too many of them. Not too many. Not right. too many because I think the world is moving away from that. And, uh, you know, I think to stay ahead of the curve, that's the direction you would take. Right. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is the treatment you've given this, uh, again, vis-a-vis -vis the Nexon, more upright. Yeah. Do you think the Indian market or the Indian customer likes a kind of more squared off looking car with those sort of more upright proportions? I mean, there are certain uh, products which are really huge sellers, namely, let's say, the uh, Brezza and the Creta, which follow that typical SUV template. Is it something you think the Indian customers uh, uh, kind of relate to much easier? See, Hormuz, I think it's when you make your entry to a, into a segment. We were not the first in the compact uh, SUVs, you know, where the Nexon plays. Last month, we had the highest sales of the Nexon in the history of the Nexon. Right. So obviously the people who it resonates with really love that car. Right. Now and if you wanted to stand out in that crowded segment had we to, had to You have to be different. Yeah. Exactly. Right. This is a segment we will create. Right. This is a segment which is aspirational. The the, the customer in this segment wants to buy a Harrier but buys this. You know right. he wants a piece of the Harrier. So it's a micro mini Harrier yeah, in a way. A piece of the Harrier. Right. You know, and, and uh, you know, therefore, as you mentioned, the front face, you know, some of the other cues are very much from uh, the, the SUV in our range. Right. Um, and uh, uh, last question, how much of this will we see on the production version? Is this about 80%, uh, 90%? Obviously, the interior now is going to change and the lights, uh, you know, in terms of regulation, you won't be able to use a lot of it. So, just want to understand how similar will this be to the production car? Hormuz, uh, if I can... If I can tell you, uh, the, the model, the clay model, which is sitting in our studio, which leads to the production car, is uh, literally, you know, this car in, in package and size. Of course, we've gone a little wider on the, on the width for a show car, of course. But yeah, you know, H5X, 45X were 80% of the cars you see today. And this is exactly that trend. So, you know, usually in show cars, designers tend to chop the roof off, make the cabin a little tighter. We've done none of that. This is the cabin you will get in terms of size and treatment. Well, congratulations. Great Always job. Always a pleasure. Thank Always you. a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thanks. Thanks.